أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون أما بعد أيها الإخوة الكرام يقول ربنا جل وعلا في كتابه المجيد إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون Indeed, all praises and thanks belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, the sustainer, and the controller of all that happens in the universe. We praise him and we thank him for his favors, his mercy, and his blessings. We believe in him and put our trust in him. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil inclinations of ourselves and from the evil of our actions. For whoever chooses guidance, there is none to misguide him. And whoever chooses misguidance, there is none to guide him. I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah. He is one and has no partner. And I also bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the servant and messenger of Allah, whom Allah sent with the religion of truth and with guidance so that this truth and this guidance will become established in the land over all other religions, although the idolaters detest that. My dear brothers and sisters, perhaps the most important concept that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants all of us as human beings, in general and of course as Muslims in particular, the most important concept that he wants us to subscribe to and to strive to achieve in our lives at all levels is that of justice. So we can safely say that justice is the most important thing, especially from the Muslim's perspective. Now a person might say, hold it. The Tawheed of Allah, the oneness of Allah, is the most important thing in the life of the individual. And that is also correct. There is no contradiction between these two statements. Because Tawheed, subscribing to the oneness of Allah, is justice. And associating partners with Allah, is the gravest injustice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Luqman, when Luqman advised his son, admonished his son, Allah tells us, وَإِذْ قَالَ لُقْمَانُ لِبْنِهِ وَهُوَ يَعِذُهُ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ And remember when Luqman said to his son, while he admonished him and advised him, my dear son, do not associate partners with Allah. And then he tells his son, why? Inna shirka la dhulmun azim. For indeed shirk, associating partners with Allah, choosing anything else over Allah the Creator, is the gravest form of injustice, la dhulmun azim. So everything, brothers and sisters, even the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, boils down to the concept of justice. For it is a grave injustice for a creation of Allah, especially a human being who has intelligence to understand and to recognize that Allah is the only creator and sustainer, is the only one who created him and everything else and sustains everything and therefore he deserves to be worshipped.
And the Prophet والسلام, when we look at his life, brothers and sisters, there are many things we can say, of course, about his life. But perhaps the most important concept that stands out in his life, among the many things, of course, that, are, that stand out, is that of his keen sense of justice and the importance he placed on justice in his life. In dealing with every single person. He did not do justice as a ruler only. He did not do justice as the commander of the army. But even at the level whereby he interacted with his own family, He was very, very careful and concerned about justice. So even at that level, he practiced the concept of justice and fairness. So he was not only fair and reasonable and just in public, but he was also reasonable, fair and just in private. Look at the emphasis that the Prophet ﷺ placed on justice. when he encouraged some of the early Muslims during the fifth year of prophethood to migrate to Ethiopia. The Muslims were being tortured in Mecca, and we all know this. Tortured severely, many of them. And the Prophet والسلام, could not himself do anything to protect them. The most he could offer to them was once when he passed by the family of Yasir. This is an entire family. A father and his wife, husband and wife, and their son Ammar. When he passed by this family, being tortured by Quraysh in Mecca, all he had to offer them is the truth and the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said to them, Sabran ala yasir, fa inna masirakumul jannah. Be patient and steadfast, O family of Yasir, for surely your destination is paradise. Your destination is paradise. But that, of course, did not take away from the physical pain and torment that the early Muslims were subjected to. So eventually, he, he encouraged them to migrate. To migrate to Ethiopia. A land that was ruled by a king who was Christian. A king who was Christian. Islam is in its early stages. Having been on the scene only for five years. And yet the Prophet والسلام, encourages the Sahaba, these early Muslims, at least some of them, to migrate to a land that is Christian. He's not concerned or worried about the, the Muslims losing their faith. No. Look at what he, how he justified this. He said, for verily in that land, there is a ruler, there is a king who is just. And no one is wronged in his land. So you'll be safe there. A Christian king, but was known for his level of justice and his subscription to the concept of justice, that the Prophet ﷺ was comfortable enough to encourage the Muslims to migrate there. And true enough, of course, when the Muslims migrated, they were faced and they enjoyed the, the, the justice that was prevalent in that land to the point where they were never ever pressured to give up their religion and to embrace Christianity. In fact, eventually the king Najashi himself would become a Muslim. And I'm sharing all of this with you brothers and sisters so that we get a very clear picture of how important justice is in our lives as Muslims in particular. And I'm saying all of this because 
in our families today, our sisters and our children are still faced with a tremendous amount of abuse and injustice. They are faced with a tremendous amount of abuse and injustice. Injustice of all kinds and abuse of all kinds, physical abuse, verbal abuse, emotional abuse. They are threatened all the time. They fear for their, their own lives. They fear for their lives if they stay, and they fear for their lives if they leave. And this is the atmosphere in which significant numbers of our sisters and children live their lives. It is time, I believe, brothers and sisters, that each one of us takes responsibility for our own actions and we begin to initiate change in our own homes. This is an area that certainly the change begins with each home, with each family. That's where it starts. It does not start at the top from the government or the leaders of the organization. It starts from the bottom, from the root, we should say, from the families. It is high time, I believe, in light of the emphasis that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam have placed on justice, being reasonable and being fair and being just, while avoiding being unfair and unreasonable and unjust in the Quran and the Sunnah, that we need to take some action on this issue. There is absolutely no reason, brothers and sisters, no justification for anyone to be living in injustice or being abused and being threatened in all its forms. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it clear that if two people cannot get along, if a husband and wife can't get along, then he has permitted them to divorce and separate, go their own ways. But do not try to stay together and in the process, your objective in life is to simply be as unjust as you can to the other person. In fact, even at the time of divorce, and I'm not suggesting that as soon as any couple is faced with any problem, they say, let's divorce, let's separate. I am not suggesting that at all. Yes, it is to be used as a last resort as a way out of preventing people from reaching the point where they allow the temptations of shaitan to take over and they allow the evil inclinations of ourselves to take over. This is why the Prophet he used to seek refuge in Allah from the evil inclinations of his own self. The evil choices. We have the potential, brothers and sisters, because of our intelligence and our freedom of choice, to choose to do good or to choose to do evil. The potential is there. So we seek refuge in Allah from that potential of choosing to do what is evil. That is, what, that is what is meant by وَنَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِن شُرُورِ أَنفُسِنَا وَمِن سَيِّئَاتِ أَعْمَالِنَا We seek refuge in Allah from the evil inclinations of ourselves. The potential to do evil. وَمِن سَيِّئَاتِ أَعْمَالِنَا And also from the evil of the actions we do perform from time to time. So there is no reason why anyone should have to live with injustice or with abuse. We all need to consider and think about the day of judgment, brothers and sisters, when we'll stand before Allah the Creator to be held accountable for our choices and our actions. 
Obviously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the exalted, the glorified, knew that not every couple would be able to get along and to live in peace and harmony. That's the ideal. That is the ideal. MashaAllah, most people are able to do so in spite of the problems and disagreements that may come up from time to time. That is part of how life unfolds. That is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended that life should unfold. That in a couple's life, they will always face challenges. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not for a moment want anyone to either do injustice or to have to live with injustice. So he tells us in the Quran, Inna Allah ya'muru bil adl. Surely Allah commands that which is just. So anyone, anyone who believes that the Quran or the Sunnah in any way permits them and justifies the injustice that they do to their spouse, whether it's the husband to his wife, or the wife to her husband in some cases, or to the children. Anyone who believes that, we say to them, you are wrong. Because the Quran says, Inna Allah ya'muru bil adl. So how can Allah order injustice as you claim? Allah does not order injustice. Surely Allah commands justice. That which is just, that which is right, that which is fair. Wal ihsan and kindness. And the kindness here is to even give more than you are required to give. To bend over backwards as we say. And not just to call everything down the middle. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, and these verses are in context of divorce in Surah Al-Baqarah. Even in divorce, Allah says, وَلَا تَنْسَوُ الْفَضْلَ بَيْنَكُمْ At the time when people are angry, they are stressed out, they are full of anxieties about the uncertain future. The time of divorce is a very trying and stressful time for anybody. It's the time when a person might be more prone to being unjust and unreasonable or at the very least wanting to call everything down the middle even then Allah tells us do not forget to be gracious among yourselves do not forget to be gracious that is give up even a little bit more of your rights all for the sake of peace inner peace and contentment so anyone who believes or claims that the Qur'an allows me to do this and allows me to do that, which is unjust and unfair, which is tantamount to abuse, we say to them, you are wrong. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan. Surely Allah commands justice and kindness wa ita idhil qurba. And that you should give, you should give in charity to your close relatives. And just in case anyone believes that there might be some kinds of injustice that Allah has, has permitted, Allah says, On the one hand, He commands this, on the other hand, He forbids this. Together, the picture is crystal clear. You can't miss it, even if you close your eyes. And He forbids. All forms of indecency, all forms of indecency and lewdness, whether in speech or in action. And everything that's objectionable, reprehensible, vile, and transgression, oppression, injustice. He admonishes you so that perhaps you will take a warning, you will remember, you will benefit from this admonishment. This is what the Quran says. So it is impossible, brothers and sisters, 
And it's wrong for anyone to try to justify his or her abuse and injustice by quoting ayats of the Quran and a hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. Because Allah has made it clear as you have seen in this one ayah that not only has he commanded justice but he has also forbidden injustice. In the hadith Qudsi that there's related by Imam Muslim in his sahih Allah the Exalted said, Ya ibadi, inni harramtu dhulma ala nafsi, wa ja'altuhu baynakum muharraman fala tadhalamu. My servants, surely I have made injustice, dhulm, transgression, oppression, call it what you like, forbidden upon myself. And this is Allah the Creator. There is no one who can force Allah to do or not to do anything. Yet out of his infinite mercy and compassion for us and for all his creations, he says, I have made injustice forbidden upon myself. He has made that pledge. The creator has made that pledge. If he is unjust, no one can hold him accountable. No one has the power, let alone the authority or the right to hold him accountable, to object. We can object all we want. Yet, the Creator, the compassionate, the merciful, tells us that He has pledged. He has taken a vow, if you like, upon Himself that He will never commit injustice. And that He has made injustice prohibited among you. So do not commit injustice upon one another. Do not commit injustice upon one another. So it is time, brothers and sisters, that we begin to live this message of justice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has talked about so eloquently in the Qur'an and the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam has expressed in the sunnah to the point where he lived his life as well based on this concept of justice. Many people claim that the Qur'an gives them the right to hit their wives. Yet when we look at the Prophet ﷺ, what do we see? This is the messenger charged with the mission and the job of not only conveying the message, but living the message as well, to show us how it's done. He was also charged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the job of living this message to show the people how the message should be lived in practice. So he taught not only the theory, but also the practice, the implementation. Because we may dispute about the theory, but surely the implementation in the practice of the Prophet ﷺ is clear for all to see. His companions tell us as Al-Imam Al-Bukhari has recorded in his Sahih, that he never ever, alayhi salatu wasalam, raised his hands to hit anybody, to hit anybody or strike anyone, except in war, in battle. This is the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, never raised his hands to hit anyone, except in war, in, on the battlefield. Where do we stand these days, brothers and sisters, when for the least thing we slap our children and our wives in the face, we punch them in the face. When the Prophet والسلام, has forbidden hitting anyone in the face. And we still think we're justified in doing this. We still think the Quran allows us to do this. We are distorting brothers and sisters, the message, this wonderful message of the Quran. We are distorting that message and we are doing so quite often knowingly, willfully. But all of us must be mindful. Whether we choose to be mindful or we choose to conveniently forget it, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to hold every single person accountable on the day of judgment. Then what would we say? How is it, brothers and sisters, that quite often 
we, we treat our sisters as we treat animals. Yet at the end of the day, we expect to have an intimate relations with her. We expect to have intimate contact with them. We abuse them mentally and verbally and emotionally. We call them all kinds of names. And you know very well what I'm talking about. Some of these words we can't even repeat. And yet at the end of the day, we hope to be close to them and to have an intimate connection with them. The Prophet ﷺ tells us in a hadith that again Imam al-Bukhari relates in his Sahih, أَيَضْرِبُ أَحَدُكُمْ إِمْرَأَتَهُ دَرْبَ الْفَحْلِ ثُمَّ يُجَامِعُهَا مِنْ آخِرِ اللَّيْنِ Would any one of you strike his wife as he strikes an animal, as he beats an animal, and still expects at the end of the day to be intimate with her? Is that going to work? Is that going to happen? What is it from our own perspective, the, the common sense that Allah has given to all of us? What do you think might enhance and promote and encourage intimate relationship between the spouses? Abusing the person physically, emotionally, verbally, calling, out, calling them all sorts of names? Or being gentle, being kind, being forgiving, being compassionate, being willing to overlook certain things. Which one do we think, brothers and sisters, would be more conducive to a good relationship with our spouses? The tough, macho, hard-hearted, misguided behavior or the one that is full of kindness and softness, gentleness. The Prophet والسلام, brothers and sisters, taught us that not only in marriage, but in every relationship we have, it's not about control at all. But for many of us, it seems like, at the very least, marriages are about control. And quite often, we seem willing to beat our wives into submission. Because it seems like that's how we feel in control. I'm the man. I'm in charge. I'm in control. When I speak, they tremble with fear. But the Prophet والسلام, was never like that. He was always kind and gentle and soft. When he saw something that he didn't like, he spoke out. He did not stay silent. And I'm not implying we should stay silent and turn a blind eye. But even when he corrected things that he did not like, alayhi salatu wasalam, it was always, always, without exceptions, always with gentleness, with kindness, with compassion. So that the person or the people he had to correct, they loved him even more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about this gentleness of character. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ and by the mercy of Allah, you were soft and gentle and kind with them. But if you were harsh and hard-hearted, they would have dispersed from around you. This was the nature and character of the Prophet ﷺ. This is how he preached and lived the message of Islam. So that he was always soft and kind with, with everybody, including his wives, his family. When Aisha was asked what he used to do at home, she said, Kana fi khidmati ahli. He used to serve his family. He used to serve his family at home. Until he hears the adhan for salah, then he would come out and he would pray. He did not expect the family to do all the work and he would just sit at home and do nothing. But he was there serving his family, mending his own clothes. Helping out any which way he can. 
This was the gentle character and nature of the Prophet ﷺ. And is there any man who is more man than the Prophet ﷺ? I am sure you will all agree with me, no. But he didn't have to beat his wives into submission. He didn't have to abuse them to the point where they tremble when he's home. They were comfortable enough at any time, brothers and sisters, in spite of the office that he held, the messenger of Allah, they were always comfortable. In fact, not only his wives, but the Muslim women in general, they were always comfortable enough to come to the Prophet ﷺ and to talk to him about anything they wanted to talk about. Sometimes even raising their voices in his presence. Yet when they hear the voice of Umar ibn Khattab, they all would become quiet. And this is a hadith that is related by both Imam al-Bukhari and Imam al-Muslim in their sahih. Women with the Prophet والسلام, arguing with him and raising their voices. When they heard Umar, Umar ibn al-Khattab asking permission to enter, they all became silent. And when Umar asked the Prophet about this, because when he came in, he saw the Prophet smiling. The Prophet told him, I am amazed at these women. That only moments ago, they were arguing with me and raising their voices. But as soon as they heard your voice, O Umar, they became silent. And Umar said to the ladies, O enemies of yourselves, the messenger of Allah deserves more that you should fear him than me. Why are you afraid of me? But the ladies spoke up. Here's what they said, brothers and sisters. They said, you, O Umar, are very tough and harsh. But the Messenger of Allah is soft and gentle and kind. Messenger of Allah. Soft and gentle and kind. So it is time, brothers and sisters, we go back to these noble qualities in ensuring that we demonstrate these qualities and these characteristics not only when we're in the public eye, but perhaps more importantly, when we're out of the public's eye, when we have to deal with our own families. It is time that we resolve, we make a firm resolve to begin this change of eradicating all forms of abuse and injustice and unfairness in our homes. That's where it starts, brothers and sisters. At the end of the day, we must always remember that whatever we do, whatever choices we make, whether we seek to be gentle and kind with our spouses and our children, or we still believe the harsh way is the best way and the only way, we must remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will hold each person accountable for his or her choices and deeds. And if we're unwilling to do justice now, we will surely have justice done to us on the Day of Judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May He open up our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message that He has revealed. And may He inspire us and motivate us to hold on to and to live by that message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us, guide our steps so that we can begin to eradicate all forms and all kinds of abuse and injustice in our own homes, with our own families. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and protect our families from the challenges and from the deviations and temptations that we have to face in this life. Brothers and sisters, it is challenging as it is to have to worry about the temptations and the deviations in the society in which we live than to have to also worry about abuse and about injustice. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم اللهم اغفر لي وارحمني الحمد لله وكفى الصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى وبعد Let us send peace and blessings upon the messenger of Allah for Allah has commanded us to do so in the Quran when he said إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد
وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معهم بمنك ورحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والكفرة والملحدين وانصر عبادك الموحدين اللهم انصر إخواننا المسلمين المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم أفرغ عليهم صبرا وثبت أقدامهم وانصرهم على القوم الكافرين اللهم رد المسلمين إلى دينك ردا جميلا واجعلهم هداة مهتدين لا ضالين ولا مضلين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك قريب سميع مجيب دعوات وقوموا إلى صلاتكم